would you like some beginners hints and tips in acrylic paint so you can create a pet portrait like this one? If so, look no further, let's get on with the video. Now when you're working on a pet portrait you want as smooth a canvas as you can get. This is because I work in a lot of layers and so I need a smooth surface to be able to put all the detail I need to put in. My canvas itself wasn't quite um, smooth enough so I used two coats of gesso that I sandpapered in between to achieve the smoothness. Now I'm blocking in my background and blocking in all of my lights and darks that I need for the fur and I'm following the direction of the fur so that I get a nice flow and a more realistic look later on. Because I work in a lot of layers, these underneath layers will show through slightly a little bit later on. So that's what I'm doing. Lights and darks, not so worried about the colours I'm using just yet, as long as the lights and darks are in there, because I can adjust all of those later with further layers. Moving on to the eye now, using black to line where I want some of the darks. I'm also going to use a firm bristle brush just there to blend out some of that colour because I want some of the shadows moving down into the eye. Again, not worried so much about tons of detail at the moment. I'm putting the base layers in to get the shadows where they need to be. And I say blending through, you can see the slight shadow underneath the eyelid with that blending brush. I'm also using a liner brush to add these small details. As I said, I'm working layers. This is the base layer to the eyes. I'm adding the details that are going to slightly show through and add more dimension a little bit later on. I've got a slight pink, off pink colour that I'm outlining the eyes with as well. Um, it's not just one colour though. You need to, as with any other artwork, pay attention to your reference photo. Make sure that you've got the right tones in there. It's not just one solid colour all the way around. That's how you're going to get a cartoony look. I'm also putting the shadows into the ears because I'll need the depth in there later on because I'm going to be putting white hairs over them. So you need the dark so that the white hairs stand out and so it looks more realistic. So carrying on with the fur now, still blocking in all of those darks and all of those lights. I've got some shadows under the chin and I wanted to add a bit of a purpley tone to those to differentiate them from the white muzzle that the cat has. Again, these are undertones, under colours. They're working with the blue background that I've got already. So another layer of the eyes now, now that the original base layer was dry, adding in yellows and oranges. And then as those are in, back onto the fur. Because I'm working in layers, I want to make sure that each part is dry before I move on to the next layers. Otherwise, I'm just going to lift up all of that colour. So glazing some pink onto the nose and adding more details. And then again, back onto the eye. Now it's dry with some burnt umber, I think that is. Uh, mixed with a bit of um, burnt sienna and then I'm blending that through as you can see I'm working on the depth slowly but surely um, increasing the detail in those eyes and you can still see in those eyes they are the black is still showing through that will lessen and lessen the more layers that I put in so lots and lots of layers now adding some highlights that again will just add some dimension to those eyes when the final glazes go on so starting to pick up a bit more detail now, I'm using a small round brush and just picking out some of the hairs, individual hairs, I'm using a liner brush now over the ears, so creating all the straggly long hairs over those ears. I'm using a um, buff titanium for that so that I can add more brighter whites over it later on. For using fur, I'm for making fur, I'm using a comb brush here. It's also known as a rake brush. Um, it means I can very quickly get some fur texture in with not a lot of effort. Now I am need, going to need to go over that with a round brush. I'm doing it now and with a liner brush as well to add individual strands. Otherwise it's going to look very, very um, stiff. It's not going to look very realistic. Um, so I use the rake brush to get base colour down. You don't want an awful lot of paint on that brush. You need it quite wet, but not. it takes a bit of practice because you can end up just looking like you're using a normal brush. And what you want to do is have individual fur strokes. So if it's looking like you've got just a normal brush stroke, you've got too much paint on that paintbrush. 
normally you need more paint on your paintbrush but not necessarily with a rake and comb brush so individual hairs now following the shape that the hair is going with my liner brush also known as a rigger brush it's what they used to use on the um, painting boats to get the rigging and the nice fine detail on the rigging i think that's actually why it is called a, a rigger brush but i might be wrong there i might be making that up but it is what they used to use to make the rigging so again following all of the um lines of the hair the direction it's going in i'm working in small clumps and clusters i don't want to make polka dots or stripes across um my cat and where it's a bit more dense and then blending that out with that barely wet stiff bristle brush just to um soften those edges so again i'm using the buff titanium over it now mixed with a bit of titanium white because i don't want it bright white because if i use bright white i can't put anything whiter over it so i'm using a slightly off white the buff titanium and that will allow me later on to add the brighter white highlights to the cat now i've got a blue background on this because there was an awful lot of white in the fur and i wanted it to show through it's an easy way to a lazy way to, for me to get some of my mid-tones and shadows in under that fur as i say i'm working in quite translucent paint and um, so the layering process really works well with the blue paint underneath it means that i've got some shadows in there with very little effort so back over now more titanium buff mixed with a little bit of titanium white and i think i had a teeny bit of black in there as well um just to gray it up a bit just so i'm adding more fur strokes over my darks and i have covered over my darks but i will be doing what's called glazing over that in a bit um to add the colors that i want but right now i'm still just working on filling in my base layer in the face with the whites using that comb brush again to get the fur strokes where i want them and then I'm adding the purples down in there as well to add a few more of the shadows that I want. Now I had a bit of trouble with my camera, so I've cut a lot of it out. I just did the same as I did before, continuing building. But I wanted to show you adding more layers to the eyes. So again, darkening up now around the edges, adding more oranges in, and then a green. And I did that while the orange was still wet, so it blended together. And then adding more and more detail with the browns and the greens and then adding some highlights that i wanted to merge into again i'm still not finished with those eyes i've still got layers to go i'm just wanted some more blending in with those as i worked and here we go back into focus now i was sorry about that bit and glazing some orangey pinks and corals over that nose and blending out again where it's too harsh with that um, firm bristle brush it is barely wet if i've got wet paint i don't want too much paint on my blending brush because it'll make it just disappear but that's just practice you you'll get to know how much water or lack of it you'll need on that brush as you go so I'm now starting to tint over the colors it's glaze over the colors i've got a very watered down version of the colors that i wanted for this ginger tom so very watered down, just going over my brush strokes. Because it's watered down, it's very translucent. So the brush marks that I've made previously will show through. Um, and again, adding some of that same colour through the eyes because I want it all to tie in um, together. And some of the reflection from his fur will be showing up in his eyes as well. Um, that's also why I've got some pinks and purples in his fur because the background's got pinks and purples in it that would be showing up in the white fur white fur isn't white it will be reflecting other colors from around it in that fur so continuing to glaze the colors I'm still concentrating on working in the direction of the fur and adding a few more colors back into those eyes the darker browns a few more whites the good thing about acrylic paint is if you're not happy with your layer you can layer over it just keep on working until it looks good i'm adding highlights now i've started with a blue on the highlights first and then i'll go over them with a titanium white i wanted the blue in first to give it that more glassy glow it gives it gives a more natural look a more glassy glow to the eyes using a blue first and then i'll go over that again with a titanium white to add that extra sparkle to the highlights in those eyes I'm now fussing with the highlights. I used a bit too watery a wash there at the bottom right hand corner. Um, 
you don't want your paint dripping if it's dribbling you've put too much water in it but i made it work i blended it out and it disappeared <laughs> Adding some white and highlights into the nose and I'm just building up and building up all the details using small brushes, liner brushes on the eyes there, building up again around the edges. I've added more of a purpley magenta colour um, to the around the eyes to build up the shadows there. And some burnt umber and raw umber and all sorts of colours going into those eyes until they get to the tone that I want them to be. And adding now individual fur strokes with a liner brush, again over that muzzle where it needs to be. Is it muzzle on a cat? I think so. I notice on a cat they've kind of got this really weird shape at the top of their nose where all the hair sort of converges to go up to um, the rest of the head. It's kind of like a triangle, um, but some hair goes over the others. Um, so. Again, pay very close attention. Look closely at your reference photo for the direction that hair is going in. Because it doesn't all just go straight up. There's curves and there are planes to the face. And you need to make sure that your fur is um, imitating that. Otherwise, it's not going to look very realistic. So not that you have realistic cats with purples and blues so much in their fur. But it doesn't matter what colours you're using as long as your lights and darks are right. So as long as you've got your lights and darks in where they're supposed to be, it doesn't really matter what colours as such you're using because it could be reflecting anything from any atmosphere. So I'm just fussing now with the fur, adding individual strands again with buff titanium and titanium white, so individual strokes because the hair isn't just going in one direction there are strays here and there so to make it more realistic you need to add those in separately too so that's what I'm doing there now this is the first cat portrait that I've ever done I haven't done that many acrylic paints I've done a lot of drawing I generally work in colored pencil but um, I wanted to try and do this. My friend is graduating, so this is a gift for her. So I wanted to try something a bit different. Um, but the same principles with any medium go. Work on your lights and darks. If you know that, then you can get away with an awful lot. I'm not saying the techniques I'm using are ideal. I'm not saying they're right, but they worked for me and they helped me create this cat portrait. And... The best advice I can give you if you're just starting out is to just start. Just do it. Um, what's the worst that can happen? You can paint over it. Any layer that looks ugly and doesn't look right, keep on working. Add another layer to it until it does look how you want it to look. The more layers you use, I find, it makes the picture look better because they all show through. And even the bad layers can give good layers extra depth and extra movement. And when you've made a mistake... Um, it gives you extra details that you didn't mean to add. It, it um, Really, the amount of times I nearly gave up on this portrait, I can't tell you. Just keep on going. Keep on building. Um, it'll amaze you how much depth you add into your painting the more you carry on going. So again, still carrying on, glazing back over those colours again. So I've added my darks in. I've added my fur strokes in, I've glazed over, I've added more fur strokes, I'm glazing over again. And now I'm using a rigger brush, liner brush, to add in my whiskers. Now when you're using a liner brush, you need quite watered down paint because you need it to um, apply smoothly to the canvas. Um, so quite watered down and then roll the brush into that paint and then very, very gently the tip barely needs to touch the canvas for it to work for the lines. The harder you press, the thicker a line you're going to get. So it takes a bit of practice, but that's what there is to it. And there we go. This is your finished cat portrait. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video useful, please leave me a thumbs up. I post new content every Thursday. If you don't want to miss anything, please press the subscribe button below. You can also press that bell icon. It makes sure that you get notified by YouTube for all new content I post. That's it from me now. Bye, guys.